I'm Pastor David Becker, Pastor St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks also to KKIN Radio for broadcasting this service. It's also available online at stjohnaitkin.org. That's stjohnaitkin.org. We are at this time holding in-person services at 9 a.m. On this, the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We now confess our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stem and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro, it comes from Psalm 31. Be strong, and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. But, tr but I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be strong, and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our support and defense in every need. Continue to preserve your church in safety. Govern her by your goodness and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, and I'll begin at the fourth verse. The Lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear to hear those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from the book of James, chapter 3, and I'll begin at the first verse. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into, the, bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. 
Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. The tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who were made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth came blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The children's lesson today, I want to talk about um, some mean things that people sometimes say. Um, Sometimes people say mean things about us, and uh, it's probably happened to all of us. We don't like the mean things they say to us. Uh, maybe they might say, I don't like you, or I'm not going to be your friend, or I'm going to beat you up. When somebody says mean things like that, it hurts. It hurts our feelings. Um, and sometimes what happens when people say mean things to us is that they do bad things to us. Um, they say something angry and then um, maybe they do beat us up or do other mean things to us. In the last lesson that I read from James chapter 3 verses 1 to 12, God tells us that mean talk is like a fire that starts burning. And, uh, you know, we've had fires out west and north of us and have been dealing with smoke. Um, and uh, some of those fires start just from um, perhaps a spark from a chain on a trailer or a cigarette butt that was thrown out of the window. Um, a little, a big fire can be started by a little fire. Well, the same can be said for what comes out of our mouths. That can start a big fire. Yesterday was the 20th anniversary of 911 when some people who were saying mean things about the United States actually did something, some things that were very mean. We call those people terrorists. They believed in a false god. They attacked America. They set huge buildings on fire and many people died. What they did was a terrible thing. What they did was a terrible sin. Sometimes when people sin against us, what do we want to do? We want to say mean things to them. We want to do mean things to them. But what we learn from our second lesson is that's not the way we should be. Um, God loves us. God loves all people. And uh, even when things do mean things, or when people do mean things to us, uh, that doesn't mean we should do mean things back to them. Um, when it comes to people who worship false gods, what do we want? We want them to worship the true God. We want them to repent of their sin. And we want them to know that Jesus is their Savior too. God forgives us our sin. And God wants to bring his forgiveness to them as well. Amen. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 9, and I'll begin with the 14th verse. 
When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, and the scribes were arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to Jesus and greeted him. And he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into fire, into water, to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out and the boy was like a corpse. So that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and arose, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We now confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for turning, tuning in today. Our text is Mark chapter 9, verses 14 to 29, of which I just want to read the following. All things are possible for the one who believes, Jesus said. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. Here ends our reading. What did the father say? Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Those six words, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, are words that we should pray. In our text, they are spoken by the father of a boy who was demon-possessed. The father had brought the boy to Jesus, but when he got there, Jesus wasn't there. Jesus was up on a mountain with Peter, James, and John. And on that mountaintop, he was transfigured, and he was seen talking to Elijah and Moses about his exodus from this world, that is, his death on the cross. While Jesus was up on that mountain, the Father asked the disciples to cast out the demon, but the disciples could not. This must have led to an argument between the disciples and the scribes who were there to keep an eye on Jesus. Can't you just hear the scribes calling Jesus' disciples a bunch of frogs? Can't you just hear the disciples responding back, we're no frogs? The back and forth might continue, you know, yes, you were frogs, no, we're not. And other mean things would have been said. When Jesus got there, he probably shook his head. As he said, oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you, and how long am I to bear with you? And after that, Jesus said, bring me the boy. You see, Jesus puts the focus back on the child. It's the boy who is in desperate need. 
Jesus puts the focus back on the real problem. The real problem is a faith problem. A faith problem that's seen in the scribes, seen in the disciples, and seen in the boy's father. At least the father is honest. He's the one who prays, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. The father really did believe. That's why he had brought his son to Jesus. He believed that Jesus could help. He believed that Jesus would help. Yet, there must have been some doubts. Maybe he wondered if he was worthy enough for Jesus to help him. Maybe he wondered if his boy was beyond help. What we see in this father is a mixed up jumble of belief and unbelief. And that same mixed up jumble of belief and unbelief sometimes is seen in us. Every time we confess our sins, we are in a sense saying, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God who carried all our sins to the cross. We believe that he has given us faith and life. We believe his promise of forgiveness. Yes, we believe. And yet we know that this day and this week, we have lived as though we didn't believe. We have believed, or we have lived as though we thought everything was up to us. We've lived as though we are in competition with others instead of seeing others as people that God has put into our lives to help and care for. When trouble has come, we've doubted God's love and mercy. When things are going good, we've forgotten to give thanks to God. For that reason, our prayer should be the prayer that Father prayed, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. So we see that the first person that Jesus helped was the Father. Jesus helped him to see his unbelief. That Jesus next turns to the boy. He rebuked the unclean spirit, telling him to come out of the child. We are told that after that it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Jesus spoke to the boy. Jesus gave that boy new life. And Jesus does the same to us. Through word and sacraments, he rebukes the unclear, unclean spirit that is in each and every one of us and raises us up from being dead in sin to having new life in him. So that he could give this new life, Jesus came down from the Mount of Transfiguration. That transfiguration shows that the one who ultimately would... Um, be put on a cross would was no mere man. He is God himself. He is God himself who took our place on the cross. He died the death we deserve. Those who were there on Good Friday said, what? They said, he's dead. And he was. But on the third day he rose from the dead. He lives and through faith in him we also live. So even though that prayer, Lord, I believe, help my, my unbelief, will always be our prayer as long as we're here on earth. It need not be a prayer of despair, but a prayer of confidence and hope. As we live as saints and sinners on this earth, we can be assured that he will help us in our unbelief. We can be assured that he will forgive our sins. We, will be, we can be assured that he will help us to live out our faith. So... Do not despair, do not doubt, do not fear. Pray and keep on praying, Lord, I believe. Help my, my unbelief, amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, amen. We pray, Lord God, we believe, help our unbelief. Sustain us through the many troubles and trials of this world. When unclean spirits afflict us and those that we love, revive, revive our trust in you. Gracious Lord, knowing that those who teach in the church will be judged with greater strictness, bless the teachers of our sin in schools, colleges, seminaries, and our Sunday schools. Confirmation classes. Preserve them faithful to your word that they may not stumble in what they say. 
Lord and Father, tame our tongues so that they are not a restless evil full of deadly poison. Turn them by your spirit from cursing the people made in your likeness to instead blessing you and keep us from stumbling in what we say. Almighty God, guard the tongues of our governing authorities that they may not stumble in what they say, but speak wisely and lead in accord to your will. Lord God, you have promised that all things are possible for the one who believes. In such faith, we bring before you all those that we now name in our hearts and all others in need, asking you to grant them health and healing. All these things, whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you'll have a blessed week.